College Football Week 13 Gambling Picks. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. You go check them all out over at tunicatravel.com. It's Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, Fitz Casino, Gold Strike, Horseshoe. Like I said, tunicatravel.com has got all of your information. Go enter our football picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Going to pick 10 games against the spread. Last week, Bradford W. from Bartlett, Tennessee, went 8-2. and two. He hit the tiebreaker. He got a $100 gift certificate to Sam's Tent. No, he didn't. He got two nights stay somewhere, didn't he? No. He got two nights at Hollywood. That's what it was. I'm, I'm getting my prize. You know what? You're going to get the right prize, and it's up on the site. Either way, you're likely to get a couple of nights stay at one of the casinos. You'll get a slot play. You'll get a, a dining card, $100 at a steakhouse, all kind of stuff. Go to Winning Cures Everything. Hit that bad boy. You can tell this isn't Chris. I'm not Chris. He is not Chris. He is my father. I'm still not Chris. His name is Lee. Everybody, welcome to the show. He's filling in for Chris while Chris is in Disney World. Whew. All of you dudes that came on the show and you wanted to talk trash about how we couldn't pick nothing. And then Chris goes 5-2 and two last week. And did none of y'all pick anything undefeated? I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. You can try it again this week, though. You go undefeated this week, 7-0 and against the spread. Pick whatever seven games you want. I don't care if it's over-unders. I don't care if it's team totals, whatever. Seven picks. Give me your gambling picks. Go 7-0. and Tell me where you got your lines, though. A couple of weeks ago, we had some of you fools just making up lines. It ain't working like that. Tell me where you got them. Do that thing. Leave it down in the comments. Tell us where you're coming from. I want to see somebody go 7-0. We will bring you on the show. Okay? Let's do this thing. Last week, I went 3-3-1. Not great, but decent for uh, picking all favorites last week. Not not bad. Chris went 5-2. and two. I am 42-39-3. Not great, but okay. Chris, 42-40-2. Let's jump into it. Uh, you know what? Here. Hang on to... You know what? We're going to toss it in at the end of the, the thing. Chris sent me his picks. He sent a pick video from Disney World. We'll toss it in at the end, okay? Um, first pick, give me your give me your first game. I opened with Mississippi State minus 10 and a half. On the road Thanksgiving at night. Ole Miss. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving night. night. I can get down with it. Mississippi State runs the football for almost 220 yards a game. Ole Miss gives up more than 210 yards a game. Really? Good gracious. State runs for 5.7 yards per rush. Ole Miss gives up more than five yards per rush. That's bad juju. I don't see any way that Ole Miss ever gets to play with the football. You're probably right. You're probably right. And this is a revenge spot. Obviously, uh, Ole Miss took out Nick Fitzgerald last year and then had some shady antics in Starkville. And their quarterback is going to see an awful lot of pressure. Oh, yes. That that's some uh, that's some dudes that don't play nice. No, they do not play nice, and they can no. get to the quarterback, uh, so. especially against Ole Miss. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got state state minus eleven. Him. All right, let me uh, let me write that one down. State minus eleven. No, ten and a half. Ten, ten and a half. Ten and a half. State minus ten and a half. All right, game number one for me: Michigan at Ohio State, Saturday, eleven a.m. on Fox. I'm taking the Buckeyes plus four and a half. Look, the metrics have got Michigan winning, but only by 2.3 points. Ohio State is 4-0 straight up and against the spread as an underdog under Urban Meyer. It's only happened four times that they've been an underdog. Michigan running back Karan Higdon guaranteed a Michigan win on Monday. What are you doing? Like, as if the Buckeyes needed anything else for motivation. Ohio State is 13-1 straight up against Michigan the last 14 years. Their only loss was to interim coach Luke Fickle when they went 6-6. Six and six. The Herbs is 6-0 and against Michigan. This sets up to where everybody is, oh, Michigan is going to kill them. They're going to house them. I think Michigan might pee on themselves a little bit. I think this is not a good spot for Michigan to be in. They wanted to come in as an underdog. They wanted the chip on their shoulder. Now that they're hearing about how good they are and everything, It, it they may win the ball game. But 
four and a half points, and that's a lot of points on the road. Give me the Buckeyes plus four and a half. What uh, what's game number two for you? I've got Texas as a fifteen and a half point favorite against Kansas. Um, is that at Kansas? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Kansas is three and eight on the year. They beat a one in ten Rutgers team. They beat a one in ten Central Michigan team. And then they beat TCU. <laughs> They've had one loss on the year that was less than fifteen and a half points. And that was to Nichols State to open the year. Wait, that was in less overtime. That was le- one loss one, under fifteen. And one of their losses. One of their eight losses this year. Okay, well, yeah, because last last week was a fifteen point loss to uh, Oklahoma, which is under fifteen and a half. But yeah, Nichols twenty six twenty three in overtime. Whew. Good a lot. And all Texas has to do to go to the Big Twelve championship game is beat Kansas. Is win the ball game. So they're going to be focused. Oh yeah. So. I've got Texas covering that. And they'll they'll be able to uh, run the football on Kansas, I do believe. And yes. if Kansas can't run, they can't score because their their quarterback situation is a dumpster fire there. So, um, okay, game number two for me, the team that just beat Kansas, Oklahoma. Oklahoma versus West Virginia at West Virginia. It's in Morgantown, Friday, 7 p.m. on ESPN. Oklahoma is a pick em. I got them at a pick them. Now, when I looked back at it, they were a they were plus one, and then when I looked at it again this afternoon, they were minus one. So, I got it at a pick. It's obviously going to change. I don't think it matters. The metrics have got Oklahoma minus one. Oklahoma has won and covered four straight against West Virginia since 2015. Oklahoma is 33 and three against the Big Twelve. Two of the losses are to Texas. One is to Iowa State. Both of those teams, they are not traditional Big 12 offenses. They are teams that can stay on the football field. I don't know that West Virginia can. It, and maybe they can, but I think that this is one of those where it's going to be ping pong. It's back and forth, and Oklahoma thrives in that kind of situation. You want to start putting up 1,200 yards of total offense, Oklahoma's going to win the game. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. There's way too many people talking about West Virginia here. I don't care if they're at home. It hasn't mattered in any other game against Oklahoma. Give me the Sooners. I I think they take this one. Might be a different story in the Big 12 title game. But give me the Sooners for now. What you got game three? Or game two? No, three. Game three. Three. I can't even count anymore. Game three. (laughs) Arkansas at Missouri. Missouri laying 22 and a half. Missouri's a good football team. Yeah. They're physical, and they can throw the football. They are number 20 in the country in the Massey composite, which is like 110 different computers all averaged out. And da, 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 da. They are they're a really good football they're team. They're a good football team. I think that they cover against Arkansas. I don't think Arkansas can get out of their own way. I... <laughs> I do like that pick a lot, especially – so we're recording this on Monday night, short week, Thanksgiving week. We had to get the picks done. Um, Arkansas suspended two starting defensive backs today. Did you see this? Like what it was for? For flirting with the – Well, they were they were swapping phone numbers with Mississippi <laughs> State dance team members. I'm just – Floored one, but like, that's what kids do. Like, why are you gonna get mad at a dude for just you know trying to get a little? Like, I, you know, obviously the team like sucks and everybody at home doesn't want to sleep with them. So like, Mississippi State's kind of used to sucking. Like maybe, you know, I I don't know. Like Mississippi State's been good lately, but like overall, those poor girls grew up with losers. <laughs> so like, I, <laughs> I'm gonna get so much crap from state fans. And I'm sorry, but y'all know the truth. Like you, you ain't got to argue with me. Um, yeah, I like that pick. I mean, Missouri. I think Miss. I think Missouri hangs a fifty burger on them. Yes. Like, and I don't think Arkansas's offense can keep up. I like that. That's good. That's not one of my picks. 
Um, but I do like that. I, I, I will probably have a little bit on that one. Game number three for me, the Huskies. Washington plus three and a half at Washington State, Friday, 7.30 p.m. on Fox. Metrics have got Washington State winning, but only by one point. So you know it's going to be a close ball game. Washington is 5-0 and oh against Washington State under Chris Peterson. They have covered four straight. The average score the last four years, 41-14 to 14 Washington. It has not mattered if they go to the Palouse or if they're playing in Seattle. They could be playing on the moon, and I would still feel the same way. The average total defense Washington State has played is number 67.6. They lost at number 56 USC early in the year. They beat number 14 total defense Utah, 28-24. They beat number 18 total defense Cal, 19-13. Washington is the number 16 total defense. Washington is a physical football team. Washington State has trouble with that, and I think there is a mental thing going on here at Washington State. Look, y'all know how much I love betting on Washington State. I've been doing it all year. I have made a pretty penny, but I also understand when it is time to get off the train. Washington plus three and a half here. All day. Give me Chris Peterson. Until they prove it. Exactly. You got to you gotta go Prove it them. to me, baby. Prove it to me. Number four game. Temple at UConn. UConn. <laughs> UConn has one win on the year. They beat Rhode Island. I didn't even know Rhode Island had a football team. I, until you told me that, I didn't even. <laughs> I knew they played basketball. Yeah, they got a good basketball program. That's where Dan Hurley came from. But seven, Who is now the UConn coach. <laughs> <laughs> but seven out of their losses, they've lost, what, ten ball games? They're one in yeah. ten. Seven of those losses have been by more than the spread of this ball game. And Temple is... Certainly not any worse than half of those teams. Actually, probably better. Uh, Jeff Collins is is a good coach, and yeah, they lost two games early that they, they lost, probably shouldn't have. They lost to Villanova early, and they and lost Buffalo. to Buffalo early. And Buffalo and, is is a good team. They're eight and two. Yeah, and, or eight nine and two. But since that time, they've won seven out of the last nine. Yeah, and one of those was they lost to UCF, UCF and, and they gave UCF fits. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I've got Temple covering at minus 29. And I don't think the spread even matters, does it? No. All right, Temple minus 29. Game number four for me, the Pitt Panthers plus five and a half at Miami. Saturday, 2.30 p.m. ESPN. My metrics have got Miami minus three and a half winning this ball game, so I've only got about two points differential between the spread and that. Um, look, Pitt has covered six games straight. Miami had failed to cover in four straight before they hammered Virginia Tech, and Virginia Tech is just awful this year. Look, um, Miami can stop the run against bad teams, but in the last five games where they've gone one and four, they're giving up 4.1 yards per rush and 172 yards rushing per game. Pitt is number six in the country at 6.15 yards per rush. I understand that Pitt has already wrapped up the Coastal. I got that. But I also understand that Mark Richt, over time, makes his teams less and less physical. I don't think Miami is physical enough to play with Pitt. I think Pitt runs the football all over him on Saturday. I like Pitt plus the five and a half. If, even if it's just a field goal ball game, I'm covering that easy. I think Pitt could probably win the game outright even in Miami. What uh? What you got? Game number five. Game number five. I've got uh, Boise and Utah State. Utah State comes in at ten and one. Boise at nine and two. Boise's only lost two ball games this year. They lost to Oklahoma State early. Game when they, three, right? When they couldn't run the football, Oklahoma yeah. State held them to nothing running the football. They lost to San Diego State. Because of the same thing. They only had 50 yards rushing against San Diego State. Physical football teams give Utah State fits. Boise's going to run the football. They're going to keep it away from Utah State. And they're going to cover the three. I like that. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. 
Boise doesn't lose often on the blue turf, uh, especially in, in high-pressure situations. Uh, and this one with the Mountain West West Division on the line, yeah, I had to think about which one. There's the Mountain Division and the West Division. It's like the Mountain West Conference, whatever. Uh, be like the Southeastern Conference being like the South Conference and the Eastern, you know, <laughs> like whatever. That makes whatever. as much sense as having Missouri in the East. Yeah, exactly. Um much like the Sun Belt, like you got Group A and Group B. Like, good gracious. Are the legends and the leaders. Let's talk about the Big Ten. Nebraska at Iowa. Iowa minus seven and a half is the line that I got it. Now, it has moved a lot since I got the line. But I'm still giving you what I got. That's what we do. Iowa minus seven and a half, Friday at 11 a.m. on Fox. The metrics that I have got have got Iowa minus 15 here. Iowa is number six in total defense, number seven in yards per play, number seven in rushing yards per play. If Nebraska can't run the football, Nebraska can't score. Nebraska covered six straight against FBS teams, and they've won four out of the last five. Iowa, however, has covered five of the last six against Nebraska. Nebraska, number 96 in total defense. They're number 79 in yards per play. They can't stop people. So if you don't stop yourself, you're going to be fine. Iowa got back on track last week with a 63 to nothing beat down of Illinois. They got their confidence back. I think Nate Stanley has a big day. I think that running back core has a big day. I love Iowa here. That bunch... Kirk Ferentz would love nothing more than to shut up everybody that's talking about Scott Frost. And I think he does it. Seven and a half ain't near enough points. Give me Iowa all day. Kinnick Stadium going to be rocking, baby. Rocking, baby. Number six. I've got Florida. A four-point favorite covering at Florida State. See, this I is one of those Florida, I was worried about. <laughs> I know Florida State won last week. Well, and, and Florida State has won, like, how many in a row over Florida? I mean, it's it's one of those where it's like, yeah. okay, you kind of got to show me that you can do this before I'm going to believe you. But Florida State has been awful. They have been a dumpster fire. To say the least. Florida's number 56 in total offense. They're number 29 in total defense. Florida State is over 100 in offense, 101, and number 76 in total defense. And they can't run the football. This is going to be a Waller game <laughs> where they just <laughs> Waller on each other. Nobody's going to be able to score much, but I think Florida covers the four with a touchdown somewhere. I could see that. I could see that. Well, not to mention, the like, Florida – they need this because they might be able to get into a New Year's Six game. Yeah. And how much fun would it be to see UCF and Florida play in a, in a bowl game? <laughs> That'd be some kind of good. Game number six for me, I'm going to go with the Wildcats. I'm going to the Commonwealth. Kentucky minus 18 at Louisville. I think the line has come down a little bit. And why anybody would be betting on Louisville, I have no idea. Like, I love their interim coach. Lorenzo Ward, like that guy. Played at Alabama. Good dude. But this team is complete trash. Just awful. There's a reason Bobby Petrino was let go early in the year. Saturday, 6 p.m. on ESPN2, just in case you want to watch a train wreck. Metrics have got Kentucky minus 20. The road team has covered the last four games in the series. And Kentucky is on the road this week. Louisville is 1-10 against the spread this season. They have not covered in six straight games. Kentucky... I understand. They haven't covered in three straight weeks. But it's Louisville. And Louisville sucks. This team is awful. So I'm going against Louisville every week. And I've done it for a little while now. And I felt pretty good about it. So this time I'm actually throwing it in the official picks because Louisville sucks. It is your Louisville sucks game of the week. Kentucky minus 18. Roll with it. Mark Stoops. <laughs> My number seven game, the last one on the on the list, Notre Dame at USC, traveling to the West Coast, favored by eight. Oh, you got the line early, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you did. I think that line is at like 10 now. I don't, got it at eight. Don't think it matters necessarily, but eight's a lot more attractive. Oh, me. Southern Cal has lost three ball games this year. By more than eight points. 
and they're about to play the best team on their schedule. They're going to lose by more than eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, USC can't run the football. And and Notre Dame can play a little defense. A little? A little. <laughs> I mean, Notre Dame can play a lot of defense. Like they, Notre Dame's a good defensive football team. Yeah, I'm down with that. I I like that one a lot. I, I think Notre Dame would probably win this one by three touchdowns. Because I, I think it, this is a team that kind of, when they smell blood in the water, it's okay, let's go. And, and they will be focused because, remember, they don't have a conference championship game. They don't have something they got to look for next week. This is it. And this you is win this last, game? This is the last chance that they have to make an impression. To make an impression on the committee. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Uh, my last game is not nearly as enticing as a Notre Dame-USC game. But if you're in North Carolina, it sounds cool. NC State minus 6.5 at North Carolina. It's Saturday, 11.20 a.m. on the ESPN Extra slash ACC Network Regional whatever crapola game that you got to stream probably. Uh, Metrics have got NC State minus 12 in this one. NC State 4-2-1 and one as a road favorite since 2016. They've covered seven of the last ten against North Carolina. The road team has covered the last four in this series. Again, NC State on the road. And I got a hook at less than a touchdown. NC State, while I have talked crap about them all year, about it, they hadn't played anybody, and blah, 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 blah. Look, they beat up on bad football teams. And do not get it twisted. I understand North Carolina's like 5-5 five and five against the spread this year. North Carolina is a bad football team. This is probably Larry Fedora's last game. I've, that's my guess. Don't think it matters. There is, there is nothing that North Carolina can do to get up enough for this game. Ryan Finley, his last regular season game, he's going to be fired up. He's going to come out slanging it. He is going to slang that thing all over North Carolina. I love the Wolf Pack here. At less than a touchdown, give me a break. This is easy. This is easy. NC State minus six and a half is the last one. That's all of them, isn't it? That's it. That is 14 games. We've given you everything that you need to know to be a winner. Go down to Tunica, Mississippi. Put your action in on your favorite game. Go talk to the attendant. Make sure you got the updated line. As always, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Get in the football picks contest over there. When you're done in the football picks contest, go to tunicatravel.com. They got a thing where you can sign up and win a free road trip. Kind of awesome. So, tunicatravel.com, winningcureseverything.com. We're going to close out today's show with Chris giving you his picks from Walt Disney World. Hey, guys, this is Chris coming to you live from Orlando, Florida, down here. Taking a little break from the family to uh, do a little bit of gambling, give you guys my picks for the week. I've been on fire in college, boys. I just have. Five and two again. I'm finally over Mount 500. We're going to make a little money this week, hopefully. Nobody, nobody loves dogs more than I love dogs. But this is not the week for dogs, fellas. This just is not. I've never done this. This is all favorite picks, okay? We're going to run them down real fast. I'm going to get back to the family before I get in trouble. I got Mizzou minus 21 at home against Arkansas. It's a lot of points. Don't care. Mizzou scores fast. Arkansas has struggled. Oregon, minus 14. I know it's called the Civil War. I know these two teams hate each other. Oregon State is not very good at football. Don't know if y'all watched for a while. After that, I got Kentucky, minus 17 and a half at Louisville. I don't know if this Louisville team has quit. I don't know if they're going to fight for the uh, for the coaches that are, that are running the, the program right now. Don't really know who's running it. Uh, now that the entire Petrino family has gone. Uh, got UAB riding Bill Clark minus two at MTSU. Got Notre Dame minus ten at USC. Got Arizona State minus two against Arizona. Always rolling it with Herm. Love my boy Herm. And last, you know I'm going with, with Mike Leach and Wazoo. At, uh, at the Apple Cup. This is their opportunity to finish with a one-loss record and, uh, and and maybe if some chaos ensues in the championship games, get into the playoffs. But uh, but I'll follow Mike Leach to the abyss. I've said it for years. He's the best coach in college football. 
and uh, and he's the best thing about this game, and and I love him. So went five and two. I'm finally over 500. Uh, we do this on Monday for the week of hol- for the Thanksgiving. So these lines are going to move, but uh, whoop, better get out of here. The old lady's coming after me. Have a good one, guys. Happy Thanksgiving.